two of his chickens. Get day old chickens in the, in the mail. You're welcome to get day old chickens in the mail, right? They need 97 degrees or immediately thereabouts. You know about this, right? It's too hot and they'll spread apart and it's too cold and they'll pump together and they'll die real easy the first couple days. And then by one week old, you know, they can have much less heat. Um, they've got feathers, they're much more resilient. If you get down to 85 and they'll be all right. By two, three weeks old, by four weeks old, they can be outside, you know, almost a frost at night and they're fine. Um, what happens with babies, the human babies are like this. You know, when they're first born, they're really, really delicate. They, they really need lots of tender care. But the more well they get established, the more they can deal with adversity, etc. Um, if you understand that basic concept, my understanding is that it's extremely similar with the plants. Um, the more optimal the environment that they germinate into, the more um, <coughs> likely they have to flourish. And the more stressful the environment is they germinate into, um, the more of their inherent vigor and vitality is, is sapped, and the more they're likely to succumb to infestation, disease, um, etc. As, as life as life proceeds. So, um, those of us who are going to be starting starting seedlings in the next month or six weeks um, are, you know, I think, um, you know, we have an amazing opportunity to really set our plants on a really good trajectory for the rest of the growing season if we do a good job when they're young. If you do a good job taking care of them when they're young, oftentimes that's a time when you've got more energy, you've got more time, you've got less going on. Uh, early in the spring when you're getting your seedling started, um, in many cases is when uh, we do a lot of a lot of harm to them. Um, and that if we could minimize that, it would actually cause much greater vigor through the year. A friend of mine likes to say that we uh, lose half of our yield potential by the time we transplant our seedlings into the ground. Mm -hmm. um, Half of the yield potential of that crop is already lost by the time it's transplanted because of how you, how traumatically you have treated it. What a horrible parent you have been. Um, you have really screwed your child up. Um, now let me give you a few examples that may, you know, draw this point um, home. Um, when a baby calf doesn't get its colostrum, do you know what happens to it? It's immune system, is it, Jeffrey? It's yeah, growth cycles that you have to do. What, what usually happens within three days or? I was going to say its ability to digest the, even the food that is provided afterwards is limited. Anybody raise cows? In the yeah. Floor? yeah. Same thing. Cut floor is probably not affected, right? When they, my understanding is when a baby calf doesn't get its colostrum, it balls and balls and balls in this mm. really, you know, painful way, and then usually dies. Mm. A baby calf. People who've raised cows. I've had this experience where the, the calf doesn't get its colostrum and it'll be dead within three to seven days. It's just not, it's just not going to um, flourish. Um, um, my understanding is when the human baby doesn't get its colostrum, it balls and balls and balls. You know about this? It's called a colicky baby. Babies that cry. You heard about babies crying? You heard about this? <laughs> not sleeping and crying. Right? That's not natural. That's, a, that's nature's, nature's got a, a, a siren, an alarm system, which is like, ah, ah. That's, <laughs> something is wrong. And if it's considered to be normal that babies cry, you have to ask yourself, you know, what's your foundation for normal? Just because it happens in most cases, or it's appropriate, and it's the way things should be. My understanding is, when babies don't get their colostrum, or they're given antibiotics, or whatever, they, their gut floor is not well established, uh, they're called colicky babies, which basically means they can't digest their food and they're in pain. Mm -hmm. And they and they really struggle. And they have all these issues with, you know, immunity and, and health and all that kind of stuff. Um, understand the importance of that for, <laughs> on, you know, on animals or on um, humans, which are animals, of course. Understand that's exactly the same for, for your baby plants. So inoculation, one of the most simple, least difficult, least expensive things you can do as far as I'm concerned, massively important. As I said last time, if you're going to go out and spend five dollars on anything after taking this course, spend it on inoculants. Inoculating your seed is, is massively important. Um, we talked about chickens and temperature. Um, um, the same thing applies as far as I'm concerned with peas. Uh, anybody do the whole plant your peas on St. Patrick's Day thing? You guys have to do that sometimes. You try. I mean to. In Boston, right? It's like St. Patrick's Day. Let's go out and plant some peas. What is that like? <laughs> Maybe the snow's gone, right? Was it middle of March sometime? Um, 
what happens if you plant your peas in the middle of March is they don't germinate for three weeks. Have you ever seen that happen? You put them in, they sit there, and they kind of rot, and a few of them germinate. Like, that, as far as I'm concerned, is not an optimal environment for germination. <laughs> that is not, like, I would much rather wait two and a half weeks and put the peas into a, a warmer soil and have them germinate in three days than have to put them in two and a half weeks earlier. And, you know, because it was, it was St. Patrick's Day, because we could, because the soil could be worked, because it wasn't frozen solid anymore. Like, just because the soil could be worked does not mean that it's the optimal environment. I personally don't plant my potatoes until I plant my tomatoes and eggplants and peppers because they're also solanaceous family plants. Um, and when I have my potatoes going strong in September, like just dark green in September going into October, I'm like, aren't you guys supposed to be dead? I'm like, why? <laughs> right? Um, if you don't stress them out when they're young, if you put them into more optimal environments when they're young, actually the the, the end result in many cases is a much greater yield, um, greater health, greater vigor. Um, anybody ever transplanted in uh, summer squash seedlings? You know, they're about yay big or sometimes it was like three, four days late and they're about yay big. <laughs> and then you didn't have enough seedlings to finish the row and then you put some seeds in or cucumbers <laughs> or the same thing. Three weeks later, what do you see? They're all the same size. They're all the same size and maybe four weeks later the ones that were seeds were actually bigger than the ones that were seedlings. Yeah. And then a month after that, the ones that are succumbing to late blight, or not late blight, to uh, powdery mildew, mm -hmm. are likely the ones that were seedlings, not mm -hmm. seeds. Anybody ever seen a tomato germinate in the garden around the middle yeah. end of May? Yeah. And let it be? Yeah. And then notice what it looked like in August yeah. in relation to the other tomatoes? My experience has been that the tomatoes that germinate in the garden by themselves way later, two months later than I started my seeds, my seedlings in the middle of August or end of August are these massive, you know, eight feet in each direction, you know, green leaf to the bottom full of fruit tomato plants when the ones that I started with so much loving care are sickly and diseased and, you know, yielding poorly. Has anybody else seen this? Mm -hmm. A few people are nodding with me, some people are smiling even. <laughs> uh, my understanding is that how we treat our babies has a big, is really important. And so, uh, the environmental conditions that you start your plants in, into, I think, is uh, really has a lot to do with the overall life cycle. So.